guys what is going on daniel charles back here again for another show hope you're doing well we are into the madness of the summer transfer window so there is some interesting stuff to speak about and glad to say we are kicking off this summer with a great chelsea guest i'm, I'm trying to remember the last time i had this guest on the channel it was quite a while back so we can't catch up on everything we've missed uh, but hopefully gonna have some good discussions today in the mad world that is chelsea football club the ongoing chaotic story uh glad to say a great chelsea youtuber yan football therapy joins me now how are you doing mate good mate and i think you know thank the heavens that we don't have to catch up on all the stuff that's happened last time we've spoken because it would leave us probably feeling rather uh, miserable but yeah man they're feeling better ready for a new Chelsea evolution and yeah looking forward to getting into it mate are you as relieved as as everyone else about the season finally ending oh man I think people like obviously we've got great jobs you and I covering Chelsea and it's a wonderful thing and it's a blessing you know we work very hard but people don't understand that when you're such a diehard Chelsea fan and you feel the pain and then you just got to talk about the pain you feel (laughs) all of the time (laughs) that yes Yes, I'm so relieved it's over. And um, let's put it down to like some horrible anecdotal fever dream. And, and, you know, we'll talk a bit about it. But then once we've tucked it to bed, look to the future and, you know, greener pastures, dude. One of those kind of future things or kind of very present things to speak about is uh, before recording this, uh, it just came out um, basically solid reports uh, from the likes of Ben Jacobs and, and Romano that it looks like Kante has... He's basically doing his medical to join Al Itihad in Saudi Arabia. A crazy deal that they are moving for a lot of big names this summer. Um, and it, and it seems like the end of Kante's time at Chelsea. I mean, just kind of your initial reaction to that because it's although this was always a possibility, yeah, there was some hope he could have stayed. Well, yeah. Yes, I, I, just before I give my thoughts on Kante, as two guys that cover football. Um, and you know, I'm sure people that watch the channel, just general football fans, this is a seminal moment in in football uh, with what Saudi Arabia are doing with their league. I saw the uh, reports suggesting that they could commit 20 billion for just the next two years for essentially juicing their league. Of course, we know Ronaldo went, Benzema went, and Igolo Kante is going, and there's a whole host of others that you know you guys could all look up. Kante is going to be on 100 million uh, per year. Which, for context, I saw somewhere that, you know, the highest wage prior to this madness was Messi at Barcelona. And um, Kante's new wage will dwarf that. And bearing in mind, Benzema and Ronaldo are on double that. And Messi had actually been, you know, uh, uh, offered double that at 400 million a season. So, make, you know, we, obviously we're not here to talk about that. But I feel that we need to acknowledge what's happening in football there and what is being attempted to happen. Uh, And Kante seemingly is going to be a part of that. You know, it's no judgment on him. He clearly wanted to stay at Chelsea. Um, He's been such a remarkably unique and magnificent player that we've been blessed to have at Chelsea to win a Premier League, a Champions League, and being such an integral figure in both those uh, two of the most prestigious trophies available. Um, The truth is, the guy's probably made about 25 odd starts in two seasons. Chelsea rightly offered him a contract that was incentivized, not necessarily on success, but playtime, which if you look at a guy who has not played, absolutely that's the right thing to do. You can have many criticisms of the ownership, uh, how they've been moving lately. Sometimes they've been over-criticized, but certainly you can't have any qualms with that. And understandably of him, uh, you know, someone comes along and offers you a flat 100 million, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, a year regardless. He's going to take that. Now, Now, of course, we'd like to keep Kante, but many people wouldn't necessarily like to keep Kante to build. Uh, you build with your Enzo Fernandez. You build with the plus one that you bring in. You know, of course, we thought that might be Ugarte. It looks like a ship sailed, but whether it's Caicedo, whether it's this kid from Celta Vigo, uh, the huge hopes for Andre Santos coming to the side eventually. This is Pochettino's long-term plan, structure, system. Kante, you drop in, you're always going to be better. He's like the Eden Hazard, I call him, of defend, defending. You know, Hazard isn't part of the system. You drop him in the front three, you're better. 
um Kante, you drop him in the middle three, you're better, you're better, but you're not building around him. And that's what we need. We 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 we've thrived on vibes for too long. Now we need system and tactics. So I would like to keep him to drop him in for big games, but all things considered, injury record, you know, what's being offered to him and where we're looking to, I feel like um we we should be okay with it and we should just you know smile and reflect on his amazing Chelsea career generally. But um I think also, just like I said, we should acknowledge how this is um, an important moment in potentially an important moment of football history. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the players they are targeting are are kind of still superstar players, but ones entering the final chapters of their career, I think. Mm. But is this just to start to, you know, get those names, those eyeballs onto that league and then potentially yeah. in the upcoming years, it it kind of gives those 21 to 25 year old players an incentive. Cause at the moment there's, there's the money in the champions league, the money in the premier league, the, the esteem of being in, in Europe's top five leagues is still more attractive, yeah. but that, I mean, mm. that's a broader conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I realized that we don't want to go into it, but like China, we're doing it with late 20 year olds with Carrasco and Witzel and Os- Oscar, of course, Oscar Ramirez, um, you know, they want Gundogan who's only 32. And yeah, I just, I just feel like we need to be mindful Disclaimer: it's, it's obviously very hypocritical to talk about this with, you know, without understanding what the Premier League did when it was created. But it's still ultimately building off what is the, you know, historic English football league with clubs over a hundred years old and essentially developed football culture. Uh, you know, so that there's a lot. Of, yeah, I understand it's not something to get into now, but it's just something to watch and be mindful of. I, I do think I agree with you that point on Kante that I don't. It's a bit like, yeah, like all the best to him. It's near the end of his career. But I, I almost think there is something good about Chelsea being forced to more seriously rebuild the midfield. Because I think there's been sort of that comfort in recent years. And it's not been a, a good comfort because it hasn't worked out. It's not been a good strategy of like, well, we've got Kante. And like, if, yeah. if we just pray that he remains fit, everything will be, be fixed. Oh, and obviously, it, it, that do not work. Has not. It's like Hazard, isn't it? Yeah. It's the same thing. Well, we got Hazard. Well, we got Kante. You know, these like Galactico players that we lean on with vibes. But too long have we lent on vibes, you know? That's what this is. This is the window of Dan. This is the window of uncomfortable scenarios, heartbreak. Whether, you know, I, I've i got a deep, not affection, but like belief in Kai Havertz. But at the same time, if we get 75 million for him and, you know, he's not necessarily tailored to what we need in the system, even though I think he could be perfect for Pochettino in that particular role. You know, I love Mason Mount. If you get this, this, there could be so many heartbreaking eggs broken in this omelette. Do you know what I mean? But this is our own making. This is a long time coming. And, and uh, Kante is just a, a part of that, you know? Yeah. Many dominoes are, are probably going to fall. And, uh, and I always felt that this summer, like, part of a rebuild, part of changes is some change people don't like, but it's kind of changed it. Mm. It's part of like, I don't know, vegetables, you know, you, you got to have them, you know, and then mm-hmm. probably what Chelsea need. Um, I want to move on to, to Pochettino. Um, just kind of your initial thoughts about him as the eventual first choice of this prolonged yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's rough, isn't it? Like, I am, um, though I, I uh, can often delete my, my big Twitter account, I uh, sometimes use the football therapy one to to check out what some journalists are saying. And I did this morning and uh, I uh, saw a Tottenham, I can't, I can't forget, I can't remember what it is, but obviously they've just assigned Ange Postacoglu, which is actually probably a sensible and decent acquisition for Tottenham. But he was like, absolutely not the first choice. And this guy was referencing how it's funny how as soon as it looks like you're getting a gaffe for that, everyone jumps on board and sees the best. And it's, it turns out it was perfect all along. And of course we're getting this guy. And, you know, there was a, not necessarily straight up revisionism, but like further investigation dictates, this is a really good idea. Much of the way many of us, including myself, did with Graham Potter, you know. Uh, and it's the same with Pochettino to Chelsea. You know, there are some who wanted him, you know, shout out Matisse. I know he wanted him. Uh, some other people... Um, but many would have preferenced Nagelsmann and, you know, Luis Enrique. Um, did you know Luis Enrique is, um, 
is his first name. His name is Luis Enrique Martinez. I, I blew my mind. Was the, maybe so he, he to his, Martinez because of Roberto for his reputation. Yeah, well, no, yeah, but his his first name is is Louis Henry essentially. You know, that's his name. It's like hyphenated, like a double name, and then his name is Martinez. But I heard that on uh, from uh, uh, what's his name? The, the the guy who covers Spanish football for Football Daily. Anyway, um, he said that, and it just blew my fragile little mind. Um, yeah. I digress. These guys is what people wanted. They were like, yeah, Luis Enrique, treble winner, Nagel's man, currently, you know, coaching very young and attacking. And, you know, he looks even better now after, I don't think he's off, the, I think he's off the PSG, isn't he? But after those big struggles of Bayern Munich since Tuchel arrived. Um, but Poch, yeah, man, I think as time went on and as the season was finishing and curtailing and we, we saw how bad we are. We saw how dysfunctional we are. We saw how morale is low. Lampard came out more and more and more essentially to the crescendo of the final press conference saying, these guys suck. <laughs> that final like, press conference really is like, no one's fit. You know, no one's really caring like about it. Um, and there's just so much youth to be developed. And if there's one thing that, you know, unanimously everyone can agree on is Pochettino is exemplary at creating togetherness and developing young talent. Chelsea at 12. We are not trying to win the Premier League. We've got a multitude of young, talented assets that need to be brought together with a sense of togetherness and need to be developed. Ting, ting, ting. Now you see top of the list, Maurizio Pochettino. You know, and I, you know, the aforementioned Kai Havertz. You know, Danny Alley look, was like in the top 20 Ballon d'Or. So he's worth 90 million on the CIS Observatory. They can't get game for Galatasaray right now. He looked like a what who's getting linked to Real Madrid. You know, th- these players, it's that role, you know, under under Pochettino. I always reference, you know, they talk about Armando Breer at Chelsea. Like he's the you know, the, the second coming of Jesus and, you know, you've got Sterling speaking to Ian Wright saying he's the, he's the one, he's the truth, he's different. You know, don't wait till you see this guy. You know, no one knew about Harry Kane until Poch got his fingers and you know, his hands onto him. So you, you kind of hope the same and, and suddenly it just all makes sense, really. So I, I never gave, you know, uh, I never had an issue with him being Tottenham or ex-Tottenham, you know. I actually thought it was kind of, a positive for me because it was going to get him all wound up, you know. I was at the point where look, I'm on my knees, Chelsea are in the trenches. We need to just find a way of momentum and if it, you know, as, you know, in a jovial, you know, not not overly sincere way, if it, if it winds up opposition fans, it's part of the theatre, isn't it? So I had no issue with that, you know. We've had enough Chelsea coaches go over there. So I'm sure Tuchel will wind up there eventually. Um, but yeah, you know, long story short now, it, it makes sense in terms of just where we are and what we need right now. You know, I don't expect him to come and just win a cup immediately. I don't expect him to challenge for the Premier League immediately. I don't even expect him to be, like, comfortably in the top four. But if we're pushing for European places, if we if he creates a togetherness, a style of play, scores some goals and develops young talent, that's a massive win for me. And it's totally achievable for a man of his calibre. Yeah, you know, I was I was one of those rare voices um, before March, but I made a video around March time when things were still starting to slide, or at least a, a little bit had improved. I can't. It may have been after that Spurs defeat for Graham Potter, you know, because of course he still mm. had a few more games. But uh, and I said Pochettino was my first choice. But I'm not trying to sound yeah. smart now. It's like, well, no, get it in, um, mate. You know, no, I, I, yeah. no, I mean, I, I probably should because I get so much wrong. But you know, I'll, I'll take you've got to take the <laughs> yeah. wins when you get them. But absolutely. Um, I, I'd been speaking to Adam Newsom about this in recent years. I think we both sort of said that he'll be a Chelsea coach one day. And mm. I, I felt instinctively when Tuchel was sacked that I felt like Pochettino felt like, and I'm not, again, it's very easy to say in hindsight because Potter didn't work out, but I, I would have had Pochettino back then as well. Um, mm. And I, I just feel that there is, of course, the massive, um, non-negotiable for me and variable that if they don't trim down this squad I you know he's going to have major problems but I, I do think that Pochettino as a character and as someone who has been through a period of clubs that I think are good particularly PSG I think it is a good learning curve to come to Chelsea in terms of the political noise and superstar egos that you have to deal with at that club I, you know it's a bit like Tuchel right I think you know you get a degree in Chelsea nomics at 
at PSG and then you come to Stamford Bridge. Yeah, which actually seems like a big relief. You know, Tuchel was like, you know, everyone's like, well, they're coming to the circus, that's Chelsea. You're like, you know what, no issue, I've been to PSG, man. Don't worry about it. You know? Yeah, and that's that's yeah. kind of my hope. That I, it was kind of a non-negotiable for me that they had to go. And I think the, the new ownership understood that they couldn't go for another Graham Potter type. They needed to get no. someone who had at least been in that kind of elite environment in some way. Well, this is the third time he's been interviewed by Chelsea and the second time by the new ownership. So the new ownership did want him before Potter, but he they, they he wanted he had too many demands. So then he said, like, yeah, okay, I'll come manage Chelsea, but I've got to do this, this and this. And they were like, no way, we're in charge here. And, you know, they went to Potter, do you want to come and do this? Went, yes, <laughs> no matter what, so I'll do whatever you say. You know, Potter is very amicable and agreeable. Let's, you know, as much as I was repelled by the term early doors, I am happy to revise my opinion. A bit of a yes man. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, because I've got a great deal of respect for Graham Potter. But, you know, we descended down the table, the dressing room got toxic, the ownership realised they were making mistakes, you know, which have been well documented across different pu publications across along the way that they would probably look back now and realise they shouldn't have done things. And I mean, like, not transfers and stuff, I mean how they've behaved in certain instances. And they've gone back to Pochettino and he's probably you know, sitting there going, oh, hi, guy. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, everything you want, you can do it, let's go. And um, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And he's probably, it's probably perfect for him. You know, the only, the only way is up. Um, he will have license, a, you know, ample license to do what he wants. And unlike Tottenham, he knows he's going to get the juice. You know, he's going to, he's not going to be like sent these really naff players. If, you know, they, our ownership for a certain little while longer, at least you'd expect they still get giddy and excited with big names and, if Poch wants someone good, we're already Galacticos. We're already far more an all-star team than that Tottenham team ever was that got the Champions League final. You know, like, you know, Son and Ali, Ericsson, Kane, all the players that were significant, all the four fullbacks that were at times excellent. Were, you know, there's two centre-backs, Vertonghen and, you know, Alderweireld. It's all, it's all Pochettino, you know. So you give them all these young South American superstars we've got and strikers and fullbacks and wingers he's gonna love it mate and if he as soon as he comes to knock on the door of and perhaps not so much Bowley and Iqbali now but Stuart and Win Stanley and says can I have a superstar you know I haven't I haven't knocked on the door for ages they go yeah right so he's gonna love it I think it's a difficult question to answer at this stage because I mean we're not even into pre-season yet so there's been no we haven't even hit, hit, hit like had the, the press conference which I assume I mean he's got he's still got to do soccer aid uh, before he yeah. gets to Chelsea, yeah, yeah. which Even is quite Emma exciting. Hayes. Emma Hayes yeah. versus Pochettino. Yeah, yeah. lovely. Yeah. Um, so he's got to manage, I don't know, Lee Mack, because he 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 has uh, to manage him before he moves on to uh, Kai Havertz. Yeah. But who do you yeah. think, like, in terms of positive and negative, when, when you're looking at Pochettino moving into this squad, and of course, so many players could still leave, but I guess mm -hmm. ones that we can kind of confidently say will likely be here at the start of preseason. Who do you think is one player that you're really excited to see work under and maybe one that you're concerned may not fit what Pochettino wants? So one for each? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause there's a lot of positive ones. I... So uh, I've always been saying Bruyer because... I, I think there's such a good centre forward in there. And I think like Kane, Pochettino will like would will, will bring the great greatest out of him. But I'm gonna say uh, Misha Mudrick because he is un underwhelmed but like to a relatively profound level, but mitigating circumstances of course. But this guy is um in terms of raw potential, it, it's like, you know, it's really high octane, uh, one athlete, he's driven, he's like God fearing and all this, and I think he'd respond to a really passionate and um good coach. And I I think of you know human son down the left hand side breaking in, in transition uh, and being devastatingly fast and effective. And I just think maybe that is a good um example of how we could do the same thing in the left channel. I think also in Cuckoo, slightly on the left and also inside like Deli Alley. So, but I'm going to say Mudrick to be a little bit more uh, left field, no pun intended there, or, you know, or maybe intended. Uh, and then someone who's going to suffer. Well, I'm not going to, let's get, well, I guess we'll have to choose a player that we think will be here because obviously there's 
whole host of players that were going to go. I think, <clears throat> I think Kukurea. I know it's a little bit of a safe shout, but the fullbacks in Pochettino system stay forward and offer the whip. Uh, and Kukurea, I still think, is more just defensively minded. He there, he gets too much flack. There is a good technical player in there. But I think um, he would just look at Chill or maybe even Matson. But I think he'll be like, you know, uh, keep Chill well fit. Like, Kukure is not going to get a sniff, I don't think. Um, apart from the cups. Yeah, I think those are two good shouts because Madrid, yeah, I remember speaking to Andrew Todos, who's a Ukrainian football expert. I mean, he does a, a podcast. And I remember this was around the time we signed him and he said, you know, exceptional talent, you know, could potentially be another big star. Um and we we got all very excited watching him have a go at James Milner, and then we realised it was probably because of James Milner that he looked so good. Uh, but there, there absolutely is potential there, and, and the wide players particularly. Um, I, I would say, yeah, Kukurea. I, my concern with Kukurea is just there's, he's been knocked so badly that confidence-wise, psychologically, I'm sure that player knows the way he is. Well, he's been booed by Chelsea fans, sections of Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea fans, but yeah. sections of Chelsea yeah. fans. And I always think once you, unless you're Jorginho and somehow you can have a Champions League win, you are, I, I, I fear that he's too much has happened. Like he's, it's like- Yeah, his house was robbed as well. Yeah, his house was robbed early doors in Chelsea. And I feel like his time has been just so turbulent here. Um, yeah, <clears throat> it's, gonna, it's tough for him, I think. Final question. You can only have one signing. I, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk sport and sky sports here. I try not to be, but like, um, we've got, <laughs> yeah, we no, got to grab the headlines and the clicks here as we go into... Sure, sure, yeah, I get it. I get um, it. Just like one player that you, you think, yeah, that's that's one that we have to get this summer. May not even be like a... It, it, I, I, I won't say like, you don't have to say one name, but like a profile of maybe player, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. Easy. Um, it might be controversial, but um, goalkeeper, and I say that because um, you know Kai Havertz may or may not go, but we have I think Bru I think Bruyer can, can be Chelsea striker. I know that's like starry eyed or whatever, but I think he can be. Uh, I think also Nkuku could play down the middle. Because remember, like, Pochettino's striker doesn't, like, always go hang. I think we've got so many midfielders. I think Andro Santos might stay in the team. There's reports that he might stay in the team. Enzo Fernandez, Carney Chukwemeka, you know, these guys that have, that they could they could start under Pochettino, you know. Um, one of Mount or Gallagher might stay. And, you know, I know they're saying you need a striker, you need a midfielder. But I think goalkeeper. I think... Um, I think we need a goalkeeper that's just going to knock it about and also make big saves. And, you know, if you could put Mendy, well, in for Mendy, who seems to have just gone, and uh, Kepa together, great. Um, I just don't, in the same way, I think it would be riskier starting Gargas Latina, who, by the way, is meant to be amazing. Is to say, Gargas, you're our number one. That's riskier than saying, you know, Andre Santos, you're starting in the midfield, or Brio starting up top. So, so with with the parameters that you put me in here, I would say um, goalkeeper, and if, and if I, I'd love Mike Mignon or Andre Onana, Mike Mignon. Yeah, obviously Onana is incredible with his feet. Um, I'll take either Mike Mignon or Andre Onana for me to meet. Yeah, I mm. mean that's a good shout because Milan is has kind of suddenly become a home for good goalkeepers, um, and I. Mm. I both of those are really, really good options. To be honest, uh, I, I agree. I, I've, I've, I've known about Anana longer. Like I remember us being linked to him when Frank was here with Ajax. Obviously, we played against him. Well, we we were linked to Mike Mignon before Mendy. I did a couple of videos on it, but um, when he was at Lille, um, so we were linked to both. And I, I wanted Mike Mignon, and I said, and I was like, and we were linked to Mendy because Run, Run is in this high profile at the time, and you know, I was like, and I was like, ah, but I want Mignon, and he should be the France number one. And then we got Mendy. I was a bit disappointed, and then Mendy just went super sad and won the Champions League, and I was like, well, I was wrong. <laughs> but then, like, obviously flipped, and Mignon won the Scudetto, and he's like the best French goalkeeper now, and Mendy's fallen off the cliff, and Mike's a little bit younger, um, yeah, and he's obviously better with his feet and stuff, so. 
yeah well we we will see i'm sure it's going to be pretty pretty hectic and uh before we do wrap up i'm I'm sure people if they haven't been watching or haven't subscribed uh where can people find your work online quickly and because i'm sure you'll be covering all the ins and outs of this summer yeah relentlessly man so just football therapy on youtube um not active on twitter but i am on instagram so at football yannick on instagram and uh, there'll be a verification badge there to, to know it's me and um yeah i do lives and stuff on insta trying to develop my following on there absolutely yeah thanks for, thanks for having me man no worries mate uh, always great to catch up thank you guys for listening thank you guys for watching you can follow me on twitter at son of chelsea i'm still trying to use twitter not as much as as i used to but i'm on there and, and all of that good stuff so please do give the podcast a positive rate and review it really does help out and we will see you again very soon all the best mm-hmm.